If we're not at a Disney park, we're dreaming about being there. And a cup of Joffrey's Coffee Disney Blend helps. But what about when you're at a Disney park? The Joffrey's Disney kiosk and restaurant locator will make sure you never miss out. Whether it's a cool drink on a hot summer vacation or a great cup of coffee at a Disney signature restaurant, Joffrey's has you covered. Check it out at joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World local monorail system. During the trip, we ask that you remain seated and please refrain from smoking while on board. Thank you. Our next stop is the towering Contemporary Resort Hotel. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. I'm Bob Collar. This is ResortLoop.com. Bob, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Tim. Uh, it's a, a beautiful spring day here in Northeast Ohio, finally. And, spring has uh, sprung. We're running a little bit late on this uh, because we wanted to get the latest Disney news out uh, to everybody this uh, this uh, fine uh, Tuesday, right in May. Uh, so, uh, Tim, yes, uh, uh, Bob. I don't know if you're aware of this. D twenty three always does their Disney Legends. I have heard of these Disney Legends of the Disney Since- Legend program. Since since 1987, with the very first uh, inductee to Disney Legends, Fred McMurray. Fred McMurray. I oh, love Fred McMurray. Yes. Everybody's dad. He was kind of like everybody's dad. He was. Uh, but yeah, so uh, since uh, since then, uh, the Walt Disney Company has celebrated. This is all from D23. Yes. Has celebrated the 200 has celebrated 289 Disney legends. 289. Yes. Oh, before we go on, I think we need to mention the, I think we already have the, the passing of a Disney legend, Mr. Tim Conway. Yeah, that was rough. That was, that was tough. That was rough. A Northeast Ohio native from Chagrin Falls, Ohio. <sighs> yeah. That one, you know, that that hit me hard. I, I I don't know about you, but it hit me hard. I loved Tim Conway growing up. Everything he did made me laugh. Oh, he was fantastic, fantastic. And now with uh with all these uh, side television channels that you can get and all the all that, you can go back and watch some of the stuff like McHale's Navy. <laughs> you know, what? he was big in that. He was one of the best things about Tim Conway was watching Harvey Corman laugh at Tim Conway. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> he knew how to push right? his buttons to get him to giggle. If you uh, you young kids, you gotta you gotta Google uh, or YouTube um, Harvey Corman and Tim Conway on the Carol Burnett show because <laughs> it's just priceless. It is priceless stuff. And he never forgot his roots. He was always coming back into town um, to, uh, to 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 be on uh, the Big Chuck and Little John show up here in Northeast Ohio and. Uh, when he was on McHale's Navy, he actually wore a uh, Chagrin Falls Athletic Department <laughs> a t- sweatshirt when he, whenever yes. he could. You know, never forgot his roots, which was uh, fantastic. By the way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tim Tim Conway, not his real name. I know. Real name was what? Tim? Tom. Tom Conway. Yes. But he had to change it. Why? Because of the union, not there. The actors' union. Yeah, there was already a Tom Conway. I believe so they said you got to change that name. I believe he had a Disney connection also of some kind. I forget what it was. It was oh, that's right. You did tell me about narration that. of some kind. I think good stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look All it right. up. I'll look it up while we continue. All right, you do that. Uh, so, um, <laughs> two hundred and eighty nine Disney legends thus far. They're uh, including eleven of the newest. Uh, talented individuals who be indu- will be inducted this year. So while Tim is uh, feverishly googling, uh, <laughs> I hope, man, I hope that's what you're doing over there. It might be. Uh, <clears throat> I will. Uh, I will uh, uh, read off the very first one. By the way, these uh, uh, will be held at 10:30 a.m. on Friday, August 23rd, in the D23 Hall of the Anaheim uh, Convention Center. Uh, for uh, all of you D23 uh, members out there, you got to get out there and, and check these guys out because we, this is one of the best groups, I think, 
uh, that I can remember. Yes. All, all together. This yes. is really good. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, Wing Chow. Um, he was, uh, Mr. Chow was uh, for 37 years uh, at Disney, played a vital role in designing and developing exceptional and inspirational projects worth more than $12 billion. Nice. At Disney parks and resorts worldwide. He served as the vice chairman uh, of Walt Disney parks and resorts for the Asia Pacific development. Huge. I mean, that's a, that changed everything for Disney. I think, uh, making it truly a worldwide, uh, enterprise as far as the parks and, and resorts go. Um, he, uh, he was responsible, developed and built projects, including resort hotels, parks, cruise ships, entertainment venues, water attractions, convention and exhibition centers, sports stadiums, restaurants, retail spaces, recreational complexes, office spaces, and a two and two new town communities at the Walt Disney Company's properties in California, Florida, Hawaii, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and other locations all, all around the world. So uh, this man touched everything Disney for the most part when it came to the parks and uh, and resorts. I love that. That's always what I think of when I think of a, a Disney legend. A true Disney legend. Yes. And, and most people didn't even know, uh, you know, don't know who they are. And, and that's really the... I mean, bravo, because because of people like Wing Chow, we have what we have today, and that's what we get to enjoy, um, which we, you and I got to get out to uh, Tokyo Disney see one of these days. Check oh, that out. Incredible. So uh, who else Who else is going to be a Disney legend, Tim? Well, let me tell you here. I got to go down because I was still looking for my buddy over there. This is my <laughs> other good buddy, though. Uh-huh. Robert Downey Jr. RDJ, they're calling him. Is that, is that it? Our, I'm sorry, RDJ. <laughs> RDJ. Him and I go way back to Ally McBeal. No. Do, 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 yeah. <laughs> and those 80s movies. <laughs> oh, oh. Man, he did a ton of 80s movies. He did. It was fantastic in all of them. You can just see his character developing because he plays Robert Downey Jr. in all his movies. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's yeah. see. A two time Academy Award uh, nominee, Golden Globe winner in more than 80 films. One of the industry's most talented and respected act actors. He was in the 2006 remake of The Shaggy Dog. I did not even remember that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was kind of a bad guy then. But then he wanted to help uh, Marvel Studios with his uh, performance as Tony Stark as Iron Man. He launched the whole Marvel thing, the whole studios. Ooh. I know. I I probably should watch that. I, I didn't even know. Huh. Yeah, he's in one or two movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah made him some money yeah so he kind of kicked off the whole uh marvel well he did the whole marvel film run yeah yeah the mcu as they call it yes the marvel uh cinematic universe started with the uh, with tony stark yeah i gotta i gotta say this uh one of the greatest films, and really, truly, it's it, one of his greatest performances was in Chaplin, where he played Charlie Chaplin. If you get a chance to to watch that, if it's on one of the streaming services, watch it. What a great film. He reminds me a lot of Johnny Depp, but he always liked quirky roles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could pull it off in the blockbuster movies, you know, like Johnny Depp could, but he also liked those like very quirky things. And talk about turning your life around. Oh, a, yes. What a great uh, success story that was. Yeah, because for a while, it looked like he was going to uh, self-implode, let's just say. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what's he what, What's he got coming up next? Is he going to be in the, what, the Avengers, the next Endgame? Is there another film, one of those films no, coming no, out? No, no, no. No, no. It's that uh, Voyage of Dr. Doolittle. Yes, 2020. It's in pre, uh, pre-production. It's the third installment of the Sherlock Holmes franchise. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. That's oh, that, I'm sorry. That. That's another movie he's working on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. He's doing a ton of stuff. I didn't realize that Sherlock Holmes had gone on. For, well, this will be the third one. Yeah. Yeah. I love I, I love those, too. Those are uh, with uh, Jude Law. Yes. So Thanks. Very good. And uh, the next Disney legend, Tim. I love this believe one, Believe it or not, responsible for the fact that RDJ was Tony Stark and Iron Man. Because he convinced the studio. Mm-hmm. 
to let him do that role. He said, he said, Robert Downey Jr. is the guy. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. He's going to be the perfect Tony Stark. Of course, we're talking about John Favreau is going to be a Disney legend. I mean, if, if there's a Disney legend out there, John Favreau has got to be mentioned. Um, I mean, you're talking about, um, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, that remake of Jungle Book. Oh, yes. Now he's got the the, uh, the re- remake of uh, Lion King coming out. Uh, just, uh, you know, and, and a, just a fantastic um, uh, director, producer, actor. He's, you know, he, he plays, um, oh, what's, uh, I can't remember the, uh, uh, his he's in uh, he's in the movies and I can't remember this character off the top of my head. Uh, Which movie? Anyway, Spider Man movie? Uh, no, the oh. uh, the uh, Iron Man movies. He plays his driver. Oh, right, 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 right. Driver, Happy. That's what it is. Happy. Well, he's also in the Spider Man movie. Is Happy? Yeah, he's he is, and he's going to continue on hopefully with uh, whatever the next MCU uh, uh, movies that come out. He's going to be a part of. He's also uh, voice uh, been a voiced character for Disney television shows and feature films, including Hercules, Buzz Lightyear, Star Command, the TV series g4 star wars the clone wars uh, and solo a star wars story john's writing and uh, executive producing the live action star wars series the mandalorian which is going to be huge that's going to be massive for disney plus i'll tell you on a so. non-disney thing if, if you want to see a kind of a fun movie john favreau's movie chef that's what i hear i hear that's really a good movie where he played a chef i believe his girlfriend was scarlett johansson and, uh, you know, R.D. Robert Downey Jr. is in there. Oh, really? And if you're okay. going to cast yourself in a movie and you want a girlfriend in the movie, why not <laughs> Why not cast Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> there you go. There you, absolutely. Just throwing that out there. Look, if you've got that kind of power. Right. You know, hey, you want to continue as... Uh, you know, on on those uh, Marvel movies? Oh, wow. You're going to be in this next film with me. Come on. Come on. Uh, you can tell they're just having fun. Anyway, who else we got as a uh, Disney legend coming up? Coming up, we've got The Voice. <laughs> oh, right? James Earl Jones. Come on. <laughs> One thing I didn't realize is that he started in As the World Turns. What? In 1966. Really? In Doctor Strangelove. And then he went to more of the films that we're familiar with. Star Wars, you know, The New Hope. Uh, oh, I didn't see him in that. <laughs> you have to look for him. You, you'll have to look. You just listen for him. You'll know where he is. <laughs> well, okay. <All> right. <laughs> oh, he's also a. Uh, he was in my, one of my favorites, Recess. Really? <laughs> I mean, he's done other movies since then, but I didn't realize he was in Recess, <laughs> the voice of Santa Claus, which now I can picture it. Oh uh, yeah. He did some of the oh. Nature Earth films, uh, Lion King, the original one, and the new one coming up, the Lion King sequels. James Earl Jones, just such a talent oh absolutely and, coming, isn't and, he he's in, isn't he in coming to america am i thinking the wrong yes yeah. yes he is the king <laughs> he is the king it's, uh yeah with uh, eddie murphy oh. and he was also uh the neighbor with the the big dog in uh sandlot he was the guy with the dog in sandlot oh yes so i mean he's done a ton of things yeah so yeah. I, I just think it's so awesome that he's playing mufasa again in the uh remake of the movie yeah who else could you get yeah. though who else could do it? Oh, nobody. Right. I mean, they're, you know, what a, what a icon that, that voice will, will be, uh, you know, forever associated with Lion King and, and Star Wars without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, how about this one, Tim? One of your favorites, Hocus Pocus, Bette Midler. Love the fact that Bette Midler is in here. She was huge. Uh, when they started with the whole touchstone pictures, yes, which was which was when they were deciding we're going to go with films and, mm-hmm. and maybe a little bit of you know rated R kind of stuff. Um, Bette Midler uh, helped lead the way with that, with Down and Out in Beverly Hills, uh, Ruthless People, Outrageous Fortune, Big Business. She was she was in all kinds of stuff. I remember it made big news because Michael Eisner had signed her. I believe to it was a three picture deal. 
Right. For like movies that were either just in development or haven't even been, weren't even started yet. And that kind of made Hollywood news and all of those became hits. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and one of the big ones, uh, Beaches, 1988. If you kids have not seen Beaches, it'll bring a tear to your eye. Say, get the tissues. Wind Beneath My Wings. What a great song that she sang for that. And of course, uh, she starred in The Lottery, a mm-hmm. short film produced for Disney MGM Studios theme park for guests of the park's backstage studio tour. You remember that? I do remember that. That was a fun movie. I remember that so much to the point where whenever we would go to the studios, Mm -hmm. I would always look up where she she shot a scene where she was leaning out of a window, a second story window. Mm -hmm. And I always would look up and hope to see Bette Midler's up in that window. <laughs> is that where she would like grab the banner and rip it down? Kind of like my thing the right, so. right part the right part of the movie? Yes. I think so, yeah. So, Bette Midler going to be a, a Disney legend, well deserved. Absolutely. She really, really helped the company out. Yeah. Another legend. And this might shock you, but I love this one. Cuz he goes way back with the company with, for some of these movies. Kenny Ortega. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Director, choreographer, producer. Uh, who's choreographing uh, Disney's Totally Mini. Oh, wow. A uh, whole high. But here's where it gets good. Here's where, <laughs> here's where it gets to the things where everybody's going to know. High School Musical. What? Yeah, he did all the choreography for High School Musical. High School Musical 2, High School Musical 3. Those movies brought in a ton of money for Disney. And they were just fun movies. I know, I know people look back at these movies now going, I can't believe we watched these movies. They're so dated. But they were fun. Absolutely. Let's see. He also worked with uh, Miley Cyrus on her tour. Yeah, Jonas Brothers, Best of Both Worlds tour. So I mean, he he was big with the uh, teen dance choreography thing for these shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's see. Directed the 2014 short, The Making of Frozen. Oh wow. Cheetah Girls. Well, they all can't be winners. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Oh wow, really? (laughs) And the uh, Descendants craze have been. You know, the third one's coming up here pretty soon. So Kenny Ortega, he's a big deal. He is a big deal, and he's uh, uh, well known um, in the Disney community as as a guy who uh, has done a lot um, for them as well. Yeah, so and, very cool. Kenny and if you ever watch any of the, like the making of the high school clips or anything, they always praise Kenny Ortega. Yes, yes. I mean, you got to, uh, and I like you said, we all laugh about the High School Musical stuff and how corny it was and all that. It was massive, and. We've talked about this before. High School Musical surprised Disney. They didn't know what to do when it became as big as it did. Right. Yes. <laughs> You're like, we just made this Disney Channel movie. Eh. Now the kids want merch. They want to see these things in the parks. And they couldn't turn out stuff fast enough after that. Right. To the point where they had a stage show mm-hmm. at at uh, Epcot, I remember. Yeah. Or no, it was at the studios. Out At the studios, yeah. They had shows. They had parades. Man. Yeah, Kenny Ortega. Very good. Uh, here's a name that I am not familiar with, um, but uh, back in back in the day, back in the '90s, uh, Bernetti is it Bernetti or Bennett? Uh Richie, Ricky, Richie. Uh, probably, started probably her- Barnett Richie or Richie right. or Richie. Yeah, started her career with Walt Disney Company as a choreographer at Disneyland in the late 1960s. Wow. Created and directed Kids of the Kingdom before going on to choreo- uh, choreograph and direct many parades, including the Christmas Parades, America on Parade, and the Main Street Electrical Parade. Wow. Worked on the grand openings of uh, Walt Disney World Epcot Center. Mm-hmm. That's how it should be. Come on. <laughs> and Tokyo Disneyland. Directed popular stage shows, shows such as the Golden Horseshoe Review. Yeah, nice. Disneyland and the Diamond Horseshoe Review at the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. But her biggest project to date, the creation of Fantasmic. Wow. Fantasmic. Debuting at Disneyland 1992, the production combined state-of-the-art as special effects with live performances along Rivers of America. The show continues a successful run at Disneyland, Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World, and now Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, Bern- uh, Bernet- Barnett, Bernetti, uh, moved to the Walt Disney Studios as the vice president, show director of special events uh, after more than 40 years. With the Walt Disney Company, she retired in 
2013. So how about that? You I know, love you it. You start out small. She started out as just a choreographer. Right. And look at all that she accomplished. That's one thing they always say about Disney. If you stick with them, start small, you get to get definitely a company you can grow with. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're very well deserved. Oh. Again, I, lo I love that type of Disney legend. Yep. Uh, going on, Robin Roberts. You might have heard of her. Yeah. Back in the day, 1990, she started at ESPN. I, you know, I forgot all about the fact that she was on ESPN. Oh, did you really? I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, she began making appearances on Good Morning America in 95. And then in 2005, I can't believe it's that long ago, she left ESPN to join the show full time. Right. Right. She's won four Emmys for Outstanding Morning Program. Uh, she hosted uh, In Spotlight with Robin Roberts, All Access Nashville. And she's hosted red carpet coverage of the Academy Awards. She has done a ton of stuff for Disney. She has. She has, yeah. Ton so, of stuff. And uh, an excellent uh, you know, journalist, you know, and and uh, in the Broadcasters Hall of Fame. But she, um, yeah, I've, she has been such a staple on ABC mm -hmm. with uh, Good Morning America that I just, it, it slipped my mind. And she's had such personal battles. And, you know, she fought cancer, came back. Oh, yeah. She, she's a... Excellent role model for anybody wanting, thinking of uh, journalism, actually, honestly. In inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Don't give up. Never give up. Uh, speaking of never giving up, uh, another uh, news anchor uh, that's a Disney legend this, this year, Diane Sawyer. Yes. Who's been around forever, uh, tackling some of the biggest issues of our time with original reporting, primetime specials, long form interviews. Uh, she is one of the most uh, respected journalists uh, around the world. Uh, she's done just about everything that you can possibly do. Um, she's won uh, the DuPont Award, Emmys, Peabody's, Grand Prize of the Premier Investigative Reporters and Editors Association, Lifetime Achievement Awards, uh, the Distinguished Achievement Award in Journalism. Uh, she was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame as well. And... Um, after more than a decade in television news, she joined ABC in 1989. Wow. As co-anchor of Prime Time. You remember that? Man, you were too young. You don't remember. <laughs> no, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, she was named co-anchor of Good Morning America in 99 and held the post until taking over World News Anchor Chair in 2009. So, yeah, Diane Sawyer, another one, well-deserved been with uh, ABC, the Disney company, for a very long time. Nice. Now, Bob, the next one, I saw the name and I'm, I was like, can this really be a genuine Disney legend? And by the end, I was like, oh my gosh, how have I not heard this before? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Ming-Na Wen. She was an agent in uh, Marvel, uh, agents, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which, you know, I hadn't seen that one too much, so I wasn't familiar with that, but I'm like, really? But then she was a uh, Jing Mei Yi Chen on ER, right? The game back. She was also in the Joy Luck Club, so she's got some acting creds here. Yeah, but she's gonna be the title star of, Mul of the new Mulan coming out. Really? Yes. But she's also played uh, the voice of uh, Mulan in a, a bunch of episodes, the animated sequel, the video game Kingdom Hearts, which I didn't realize, Disney Infinity. On television's House House of Mouse, Sophia the First, <laughs> and in Ralph wow. Breaks the Internet. Wow. She's also done work for uh, Disney's uh, Phineas and Ferb, XD's Guardians of the Galaxy, or Disney XD's um, Guardians of the Galaxy, Milo Murphy's Law, and the six-part digital short Marvel Rising Secret Warriors. And she's wow. been in ABC's Fresh Off the Boat. Yeah, she's got uh, she's got some <laughs> some experience with Disney. She's got some Disney work under her belt. That is awesome. Wow. Yeah, I had no idea, but yeah, um, yeah, she's the real deal. Mulan, how about that, man? Yeah, very cool, very cool. And finally, we're going to wrap up with uh, the uh, just he's a legend. Period. Right. Uh, not to mention uh, now a Disney legend, Hans Zimmer. Yes who has scored more than 160 projects, uh, combined gross <laughs> made $28 billion worldwide. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, he's got an Academy Award, two Golden Globes, three Grammys, an American Music Award, and a Tony Award. Not a Tony Stark Award, by the way. Just a Tony <laughs> no. Award. Uh, he's uh, Some of his projects, Gladiator, Dark Knight Trilogy. That's that that's DC stuff we're not going to talk about. <laughs> uh, but his history with Disney Company includes uh, uh, White Fang, music for White Fang. Remember that one? I do. Cool Runnings. Loved it. 1993 uh, and his Academy Award winning instrumental score for a little film known as The Lion King. I'm not sure I've heard of that one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, then he did Chris, uh, Crimson Tide, the That's a Muppet good one. Treasure Island, uh, The Rock, which love I, it. you know, <laughs> Nicolas Cage in The Rock is just fantastic. I love it. Uh, Pearl Harbor, King Arthur, and Iron Man. I've heard of that one too. He's had a little something to do with Iron Man. <laughs> uh, but uh, his big uh, one of his big things that I always will remember him for, the guiding force behind the music of Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the entire franchise, serving yes. uh, in various composing, editing, and producing capacities for Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, At World's End, and On Stranger Tides. He is composing the music for this summer's reimagining of, again, The Lion King. Oh, wonderful. So Hans Zimmer for that. So anybody in there, Tim, because we have, I don't know if, I don't know if folks are aware. <laughs> we have been critical at times. What? Of some <laughs> Disney legends. We're not critical of anything. No. I'm going to say from top to bottom, this is a strong class. One thing I can tell you right now, we're never critical about gondolas. Oh, anyway, uh, man, uh, this I agree. I don't have a, a one problem with any of these folks. I am very thrilled with this uh, this class. Yeah, so. I'm going back over the list. Nope, they nailed it. <laughs> no, yeah, Wing, uh, Wing Chow, Robert Downey Jr., John Favreau, James Earl Jones, Bette Midler, Kenny Ortega, Burnett Ritchie. Uh, Robin Roberts, Diane Sawyer, Ming Na Wen, and Hans Zimmer. Wouldn't that be a fantastic party to go to? Oh man, with all of those folks, go to that D twenty three after party. Can you imagine wow. the behind the stage stuff? Ugh. whoever's lucky enough to do that, man. And if Robert Downey us. Jr. flies in in an Iron Man suit, I'm going to be sorry I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he might show up as uh, as uh, Doctor Doolittle or Sherlock Holmes. Who knows? That could be. Oh, great class. So, but uh, yeah, some some just incredibly talented people who have done an awful lot for Disney. And uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy with this with this one. No ranting, no problems. Excellent. The, uh, A rant free show. <laughs> You want me to start one? I can I can fire something up real uh, quick. I'm sure you could, but we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> all right. Well, then, Tim, <laughs> that is all I've got. Awesome. Everybody, thanks for joining us. Tim Scott, uh, Facebook, Instagram, the website, resortloop.com. Don't forget to uh, rate us over there on iTunes uh, and uh, like us over on Facebook. And uh, what else should folks do, Tim? Everyone, please go out there and share the gateway to the magic. See you, everybody. Vacation memories will stay with you and your family for a lifetime. The Resort Loop Travel Group was created with this in mind. Our fee-free services will relieve you of the stress and confusion of finding and booking the best vacation at the best price. After booking, we will continue to monitor for ways to save you even more on your vacation. We will check for any upcoming packages and discounts to save you as many vacation dollars as possible. Resort Loop Travel Group, gateway to your magical vacation memories. Get a quote or for more information, visit resortlooptravelgroup.com.